Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. In this video, we'll look at time displays and video in the Adobe Audition Preferences menu. This is the final video in my Adobe Audition Preferences mini-series. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to like this video if you enjoy it. Also remember to subscribe and ding the bell so you never miss another video from me all about audio production, podcasting, and much more. Now, today we're working with time displays, but also video. So I'm actually going to undock the video that you probably cannot see behind me. So I'm going to undock that panel and move it somewhere you can see it. And we'll talk all about time displays and the video options. Uh, now, Obviously, preferences is control or command if you're on Mac and then the comma key. So time display here. Uh, this is the time format we're working with along the time bar at the top. Generally, you want it decimal, minutes, seconds and uh, milliseconds. That is fine. But if you're working with video, we've got all these lovely videos uh, with frame rates as well included. You've got samples if you want to get really geeky. And I do find bars and beats quite handy. Um, on the custom one here, you can do a custom frame rate. If you're working in a certain frames per second for your video, select custom down here and change that frame rate. Whereas if you're working with uh, music, you might want to change the tempo and say, okay, this is 138 BPM. It's got a time signature of 44, subdivisions of 16. Click OK and you'll see you get the bars and beats along here, particularly handy uh, for beat mixing, beat matching, and doing any kind of uh, tempo work inside Adobe Audition. Often when you're working with effects like echo and stuff like that, it'll ask you um, to, if you want to work in milliseconds or beats, and the beats will refer to the tempo you set here inside time display. So that's time display in a nutshell. Let's look at video as we've got a video loaded with its audio here. Uh, so first of all, scaling, best fit. So at the moment, it's scaling my video to be best fit in there. If I say scale it to be 200%, that's not a pretty sight. <laughs> and 25%, I probably can't see enough. So scaling at best fit is what we want for video. Resolution full. If I say I want it to be uh, an eighth of the resolution, when I start playing back, let's go in here and play back you'll see it goes all fuzzy, uh, which is not quite good. But it goes to full resolution uh, when I am paused. Why is that? Well, if we go to the, uh, and let me change bars and beats back to decimal so I can see the time in, in a better display. If I go back to full, if I say full resolution on stop, doesn't matter if it reduces the quality when I play back. When I hit the stop, it goes straight back, pops back into full resolution. I advise leaving that ticked. Also, spot video frame when adjusting audio clip. I advise leaving that ticked as well as if you're working in multi-track here and if we go ahead and bring this video in you'll get a video reference track now you can see the video there if i trim in this it will show me where i'm trimming to in the video which is handy if i have that disabled in video uh, for instance then it won't spot and when, wherever i move this it's just not going to show me the, the visual feedback of the cut or the edit i'm making so definitely leave that ticked Full screen settings, if you've got a, um, a secondary screen, you might want to enable full screen and pop it out onto another monitor. I have a ton of different monitors I work with, so I can definitely use this. It takes the video off my main audio editing screen, puts it on one of my dual displays, and is really handy. You've also got this tick box, disable full screen when audition is in the background. You definitely want that on because if you go off and do some other work, you don't want your full screen video still displaying on your secondary monitor. So keep that ticked. And then this final box here is the video time code overlay. Pretty self-explanatory. The time uh, that you're uh, selecting inside the video, currently 1 minute and 41.487 seconds. So we can enable it or disable it. I advise leaving it enabled so you can see the time as it goes. You can make it really huge if you want, but I find 30% is pretty good. You can change the background opacity to be really dark. If you're working with really bright light video, uh, you might want to consider making that darker or more opacity. Usually 50% is fine. You can move it around into different corners, into the center, to the top. But again, I find the bottom pretty good. And the time reference will either be the session or the media file. So you see this media file is only at 2.428 seconds in, but in the session that I'm working in, the multi-track session, it's at 1 minute and 41 seconds. So again, usually I leave that as default and it works perfectly for me with video editing. And there you go. In a nutshell, that is it for time display and video in the preferences section of Adobe Audition. That concludes my mini series. If you enjoyed it, do like this video and go and learn more with me in my online courses all about Adobe Audition audio production, podcast production, live streaming, and more over at mrc.fm forward slash learn.